are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yay! For the community, by the Tonight is my honor to have a very special guest, Maureen Hazley Jones, AKA the English Lady. She is a well-known gardening guru in the Connecticut area, and she is going to join us this evening not to talk about gardening, but to actually talk about her life and career experiences and to give us some advice on managing career change. Maureen, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure, absolutely a pleasure, Sarah. Hello everyone, it's wonderful to be with you this evening and I know we'll have a lot of fun and you'll find out all of the ins and outs of my uh, varied life and I'm sure it'll continue to be varied because that's who I am, I'm a pioneer, right Sarah? I think that's <laughs> going to be very clear when we get through all of the things that you've done there with your go. life. There we go, <laughs> So Home Living Connecticut Magazine has referred to you as one of Connecticut's best known landscape designers and radio personalities. But what they don't mention is all of the other things you've done with your life besides gardening. All the other stuff, all right? All the other stuff, and it's, it's very interesting. So let's, let's get to it. That's <laughs> lovely. Well, you know, my family were always, you know, they, they've always been pioneers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my, my feeling from early on, you know, I, is I love life. Mm -hmm. And you come around once and you need to, you know, go for it. That's the thing. So you're, you grew up in a gardening family, though. That is your... Grew, grew up in the gardening yeah. family. The family started at uh, Post Castle with um, those gardens in 1648. And um, they, uh, you know, I instrumental in the, the orangerie, the rose gardens, the water gardens, all of that kind of good stuff. Um, but then when, when I was born, um, my mother was the designer in the family, before her my gran. And so I learned my design skills from, from, uh, from mum and hands-on, you know, in the, uh, on the property. But, uh, you know, like a, like a lot of um, uh, youngsters, one goes away from it, you know, one yes. rebels. Right, um, you don't want to do with the families. No, and, and, you know, <laughs> and also, um, the, uh, um, you know, during the war, we were, you know, there was a lot of rationing going on. Yes. So mum put me into ballet, you know, to keep my legs strong, and I think it was so that I could carry on digging later on in life. But, um, uh, you know, went into ballet, did very well. In fact, um, uh, I auditioned for the uh, Sadler's Wells Junior Corps de Ballet at the age of 15 and was accepted, but um, the family couldn't let me go because there was, you know, they wanted me to go onto the land and into design. So they needed and, you to work. They the needed business. me to work mm -hmm. and, and do all of that kind of stuff. But, um, but then I went on and I did other things. You know, I learned to uh, drive, I think I mentioned earlier to you this evening, yes. um, on a, um, uh, uh, an American army jeep that we found at the bottom of the farm driveway. And, uh, you know, the, the, the colonel at the base said, oh, no, we didn't lose a jeep. So uh, I learned to drive that at the age of six. Wow, and, Yeah. Can well, you imagine a six-year-old now behind... <laughs> Jeep. Oh the yeah! Scandal. Well, you know, out in out in the right. wilds and all of that kind of thing well, and too, and, and and also yeah. wartime. You know, people weren't taking. You know, it was just after the war then, actually, and um, then. Uh, you know, from that I went into rally driving, got my license at 16, and then went on and um, uh, was was uh, uh, noticed, I would say, by Lotus Elan and Lotus Elite who had some wonderful racing cars okay. in Europe. That's a brand of racing That's car. a brand, mm -hmm. that's a brand. And, um, and they asked me if I would go to Brands Hatch and see if I could qualify to go on the track. And Brands Hatch is a Brands Hatch is, special um, race. Yeah, you know, Brands Hatch is, yeah. a, is a, a racing circuit in England. Okay. And um, the, uh, it would be rather like um, Daytona would be here, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of a, a circuit. And um, so I uh, qualified on a 1959 Fraser Nash um, mm -hmm. at, at 125 miles an hour, which was very fast in those days. And, uh, you know, went on to, um, you know, to do some uh, racing in, um, in France 
and, and in Germany at Nürburgring and then again at Monza in Italy. So and were you the only female racer or was that not, un not uncommon? Um, it was very uncommon. It seems like it would be. Yes, in fact um, on, ma on many of the tracks they didn't allow women but we never put me down as, as Maureen, we put me down as Maurice Jones. <laughs> <laughs> did that, I mean, were you nervous that you were going to get caught, or did you no, just, No, if I got caught, I'll put my helmet on, Yeah, cares? if I get caught, I get caught. That's yeah. all, you know, in the meantime, what could they do to me? Right. Nothing, you yeah. know, and it wouldn't affect the team. We had to find out about all of that kind of thing, too. So, okay. uh, yeah, and then, um, um, you know, w w decided after a while, I don't want to do that because, you know, I, I think I mentioned the drinking law to do okay. with people, um, uh, not drinking 24 hours of a race was not in effect then. Okay. And so there was a lot of heavy drinking and, uh, and one of my friends Causes got killed. Danger. Yes, yeah. got killed. And also, who wants to be around a team that, uh, you know, you, you, yeah. you're putting your life in your hands anyway. Right. And so, um, you know, went away from, uh, you know, decided that that was enough of that. And um, still didn't want to go back in, in, to doing the gardens although I was always designing gardens, you know, and, and writing down and passing them on to the family and all of that kind right. of stuff. You still and want it to be your vocation. No, yet. I didn't want it to be, but, but the family insisted, actually, that, that I did, went for my formal training, okay. which I did at the uh, Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, um, and that was a time when women were not allowed to date the diploma. Hmm. And again, um, uh, a lot of my professors and students, they knew that I was a woman, but I dressed as a man for three years. <laughs> And then, you wouldn't think wow. so now, Sarah, but you know, I was 108 pounds soaking wet, yeah. wore a shirt, had cropped <laughs> hair, you know, wore you a cap. Kind of blended in. Yes, I blended, blended in. I didn't have to go into the men's bathroom, yeah. you know, because there were lots of outhouses on the, on the property there. So, <laughs> so there was uh, no plush ladies' room with the no, couch. Oh, and the <laughs> oh, no, no. We'd go in there, we'd have manure on our boots, you oh. know, and dirt under our nails and all of that stuff. Right. It was, but it was great. It really was. It was so a lot of fun. So you enjoyed the training in spite of I not really wanting I love the training. I mean, Kew is a marvelous Kew. place. Okay. 300 acres of, you know, the miracle of Mother Nature. Hmm. It's, uh, it really is great. But even then, you know, so I had done that, and I thought, no, I'm still not ready to go into, uh, you know, into, uh, back into, in, into the landscape situation. And um, I had been doing some, you know, verse speaking and drama competitions. I'd been on stage in my home county. Um, uh, I played Alice in Wonderland, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, I remember that. Um, uh, blonde wig was it heavy and itchy, itchy. You know, oh it was, it was <laughs> absolutely Under the lights, right head, right itchy, but, yeah. but that's when I was noticed by somebody from uh, London Guildhall School of Music and Drama and, and so I went and I uh, did some training there for a couple of years and then went on stage for a couple of years after that so what kinds of things did you do when you went when oh you were on my stage? goodness um, Titania in A Midsummer Night's Dream, a lot of um, what I call classic. Mm -hmm. um, the the um, Portia in The Merchant of Venice, uh, Lady Gwendolyn Fairfax in The Importance of Being Earnest, mm -hmm. um, Joan, that was my favorite actually because it, it was very dramatic but it was wonderful because I've, I've always, Joan of Lorraine um, or, you know, um, Joan of Arc, Joan of as Arc, it was. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but but this, this particular one was Joan of Lorraine, which, which she was Joan of Arc, written by Maxwell Anderson. And um, I, I admired what she stood for. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a pioneer and yes. with guts and all of that right. kind of stuff, too. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that part, yeah. playing that, and uh, even though I ended up in the dungeon and then ended up... Uh, <laughs> You know, at the stage. Well, <laughs> it's like I tell my, my daughters, I, I love theater. I'm not at all in your league, but I, I love it. And my girls like to do it as well. And I was telling them, you know, even if you get, like, the Wicked Witch part, it's fun. It's fun yes. to be, you yes. know, the dramatic, you know, bad person. Oh, yes. or it's, it's a great role. You don't always want to be the... And you don't always, a new princess, right, or, you know, it's right. nice to have some variety like that. <laughs> and you don't, yeah, you know, and, and you don't need to, for, for two hours, you don't need to be yourself either. Right, right? you completely, well, yes. you hope, you hope the Wicked yeah. Witch isn't yourself. Oh, <laughs> I don't know, I've been called a few things in my time, <laughs> never a witch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so to be something completely different oh, yes. is nice. Oh, now, yeah. you didn't stay in the theater, though. No, I didn't. How long did you do the theater for? I did that for two years. Two years, okay. And I realized, though, that not many people made it on the boards as they as they call the stage. Right. 
And um, at that time, um, uh, the first commercial television company was, was, was starting up. You know, there was BBC, of course, mm -hmm. but then um, Associated Rediffusion. And I happened to notice in the London Daily Telegraph that there was an ad uh, wanted um, a man with at least five years uh, television experience, well, that would be with the BBC, to, to uh, train as production assistant with the control of programs. Well, I sent in, you know, applied. Not being a man and not having any exactly. experience you applied exactly. anyway. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yes, yeah. That's great. You know, especially with what I'd been going through up to then, you know. It's, right. I realized that if you can't beat him, you can join him. You know, mm -hmm. So that was the thing. And I um, uh, applied, was, ex you know, went for the interview went into Alan uh, Ernest Lloyd Williams' office, a six foot seven Welshman, and I'm a little vertically challenged, so there's a big crick in my neck as I looked <laughs> up, you know. And, uh, and he said, um, you don't look like a man, you know, when he knew that, found out I was not one of the new right. secretaries. And I said, great observation. Yeah. And he said, you don't have straw behind your ear. I said, no, I left that back in Shropshire, my home county. Yeah. And he said, I like your guts. Yeah. So he said, you will work 18 hours a day. And I said, you don't frighten me. Hmm. And, um, and so it, w it was wonderful. You know, Princess Margaret's Wedding in the Abbey, uh, wow. 1959 Wimbledon, you know, as a pr production assistant, um, some documentaries in France and one in Germany, which was very heavy, actually, because it was called, um, it was Return to Bergen-Belsen. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was tough. That was tough. That yeah. was, I, I, I've got the goosebumps now when I think about it. When, uh, going onto that site there, yeah. you know, in Germany, it was dead silence. And do you know, yeah. not a bird flew over overhead. I mm -hmm. didn't hear a bird. Or, it was, yes, it was mm -hmm. something. But anyway, but the television experience was marvelous. It really and it's was. related to the acting. I mean, the, yes, you know, the absolutely. Uh, entertainment industry. Right, I guess. right. right. I mean, anyway, after uh, six months, uh, Lloyd Williams said to me, Maureen, you must have um, uh, known some comedians. Uh -huh. You know, and um, I said, yes, I did when I was on stage. He said, well, do you know anyone who might be interested in this gig? And I said, I'll, I'll go talk to a friend of mine. So I went and talked to my friend and said, come on, try it. I think you might mm -hmm. enjoy it. And um, he said, oh, I'm a little, I, I said, come on, come on. So anyway, um, my friend was very cheap. And... Um, he, Actors kind of need to be if they're not. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, they're, right? they're either, you know, cleaning bathrooms or right, waiting tables, waiting right? Tables, that kind exactly. of thing. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, um, uh, I took him um, into Lloyd's office and um, Lloyd looked at him and, and my friend was carrying this carry bag of his, you know, um, paper carry bag with a roll of English toilet paper in. And um, uh, Lloyd said, OK, Benny, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And um, Benny took out the roll of toilet paper, threw it on the floor, and all of his skits and jokes were on the, were on, the uh, on, on the toilet paper. It's a very rough toilet paper. Oh, yeah, very rough. Very rough. <laughs> yeah, I, rem I think you remember that when you met me at that lecture in Farmington, yes. didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. English toilet it's paper like, back in yes. those days, even if you crinkled it, it was still tough on still. your. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so anyway, Not Charmin. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, 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 no. That, that bear commercial was, was yeah. not in, no, not, not back in those days. So, um, uh, so he rolled his toilet paper right, yeah, and he, and he said, OK, he Lloyd, what do you on. want me to do? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, Lloyd said, anyone, Benny. And that's how Benny started. Benny Hill started. Benny Hill. That's amazing. Yes, it is. It wow. is wonderful. I mean, uh, and he was, I mean, a British comedian icon for years oh, and years yes. and years. Oh, yes. I mean, and the reruns. Even that in you the still, States. Yes. Yeah. Was, I, mean, I remember he was, him growing up in the, you know, being yeah. on in the States. Oh, yes. Shows. Yeah. Uh, very risque for that yes. time. Right. You know, tongue in right. cheek and, you know, and the, the, the little right. bits where, you know, he. Uh, somebody would run around naked right. and disappear the behind body. the bush, and, yeah. and then, of course, mm -hmm. his psychic that he always patted on the head, you know, the little bald fellow and all of right. that, you know, right, right. lot of fun. So lot now, you did not um, stay in England, though. You became, you switched again from Right. Well, what I wanted to television. do was, um, I, um, uh, my brother, actually, um, he, he was in um, uh, a jazz band, and he was okay, in the fo yeah the follow-up to, to the Beatles um, in Liverpool. It was the you know the, the so he warm was the warm-up band. He was the warm-up band. Beatles, right, in Liverpool. right, and he was a classical guitarist and a jazz guitarist wow. too. Wow. And um, but uh, uh, he developed cancer, unfortunately, and um, uh, 
but he looked as if it was going to, he was going to come through it. Uh -huh. So I nursed him for a while, right. you know, left the job in, in London, went back and nursed, uh, nursed him. Uh -huh. And um, so then, um, brother right, 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 yeah, yeah, with the guitar. Yeah. Yep. And, um, he, um, and so I knew that TWA took 60 British girls a year to fly overseas. And I spoke French and Spanish, you know, mm -hmm. reasonably well. And so I applied. And I wanted, the reason I wanted to, to travel, and I wanted to see the gardens of the world, too. Oh, yes. So, so we have a picture of you. Right, that's Let's me see, up on the right top. Here. Right, that's me. Yeah. So now these were the days when you had to be a certain height, a certain weight, you had I to just, fit the uniform. Yes. It was very, very different. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, I just made the height at five foot three and a half. Fair. And the weight, I was 108 pounds then, you oh, know, which was... Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, um, you know, we had to wear a girdle, which I hated. I'd never worn a girdle. Mm. Times really have changed. They really they? changed, yes. And, I mean, you had to have your hair a certain length, yeah. certain color lipstick. Right. Um, or you couldn't wear a ring, you could wear a, a wristwatch, and you could only wear very small, you know, earrings, earrings that kind right. of thing. Yeah. So, so do you, I mean, there's more, which we'll, we'll get to in a second, but do you, can, when you were going through all of this, I mean, you, you dressed as a man twice for two of the things mm -hmm. that you did. Um, you know, you applied for a job that only men were allowed. Do you, did, were you consciously thinking, I'm a kind of a women's rights, I'm just going to do what I think I should have the right to do? Or did you just do what you wanted to do and you just didn't pay attention to I did the, what the I wanted culture to do. of what was around you? I, I did what I wanted mm -hmm. to do and I was confident enough in my own ability. To and do. Um, I knew I had a, a little bit of charm. Mm -hmm. and, um, just a little, just a little yeah, bit. <laughs> that, that, that I thought, um, you know, uh, I was able to, as you can see, talk the hind leg off a donkey. Yeah. So by the time that some of, some of those people, you know, got, got around to realizing, wow, she's not a man. Right. They, didn't they realized, wow, she has background. She knows what she's talking right. about. She would fit in. And let's, you know, let's take a chance. Yeah. And so, yes, most definitely. No, I didn't think about... Um, you weren't making a point. No, or, yeah, no, no, I was you not a, like carrying the flag. No, I was not charge. a woman's liber, yeah. you know, uh, uh, back then. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel I needed to. As I say, I would just uh, wanted to be myself and follow, um, follow into careers that I knew I would enjoy mm -hmm. and that I could do well. Right. Because you know, having been on stage, I knew that television wasn't going to be that much different. Except on stage, of course, um, you know, the, the movements are tremendous. You know, if I did this kind of thing, which mm -hmm. I've just done now anyway, but, um, it, it, you know, it, it wouldn't play. Whereas television mm -hmm. is, um, it's facial, right. as we it's know, much more you know, intimate it's facial, and yes, close. absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, one's voice. Right. So I didn't have to project as far. In, uh, it, so what, what would you say to people who, I mean, all the things you've done are, things you've loved and things that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. You may not have done them for a long time, some longer than others, but I, it seems like when people are making changes in their careers, fear is a big, a, a big barrier, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. when you're making a change from one thing to something completely different. Right, right. What, what advice would you give to people who are facing that fear or trying to overcome that? Well, one of the, th the, the things that, that uh, stood um, me in good stead, so to speak, was that I was ab I'd been able to combine my passions and things I was good at. Uh, you know, one never stops learning, though. Right. That's, that's the thing, one keeps on learning. Um, I was able co to combine the fact that I love to write and um, uh, perform, mm -hmm. and the gardens, which have stood me in good stead for now, um, in the English lady, mm -hmm. you know, writing columns and newspapers, you know, mm -hmm. for etc., being on the radio on WRCH, and lecturing um, about gardens, which I'm so passionate about, as you know, mm -hmm. the organic, you know, the, 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 that kind of thing. But, but what I would, um, I did a um, CBS um, news seminar a number of years ago to do with, uh, you know, f for folks who are thinking about changing careers. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said to, to them, and I would say to anybody now, do your homework, first of all. Pre-production is as important as production. Mm -hmm. Do the research, but keeping in mind, choose something that you, you really love, whether it's books, whether it's art, uh, you know, no matter what it is, you know, if you decide you want to own a bookstore mm -hmm. or you want to write, 
Um, you know, for instance, you want to write, take some writing courses. You know, get that, that good um, um, uh, training under your belt. As well, of course, being able to type, like on a computer. Right. That kind of thing, too. Um, way back, um, I taught myself, um, before I went into to television, you know, t um, was uh, shorthand and typing. Mm -hmm. because I knew it was going to be useful to me it to do with that. writing and all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. too. But um, yeah, and also say to folks, timing is important in life. Mm -hmm. If you're married with children, you have a certain responsibility. You can't go off to the guard, you know, to the Amazon or something on right. an um, um, anthropological uh, Anthropological you, yeah, yeah, study. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that's it. I, I'm, my teeth have got stuck to my tongue or whatever it is. You know, you can't do that because you've, right. got, you've got family. Right. So, so therefore, you, you do what you can within those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what I did was before I got married. Mm -hmm. And that's when the time is to go and try different things. Right. You know, you may have gone through college and, and particularly now in today's, you know, uh, environment, this, this economy, a lot of people are coming out of college and they're going to find it very hard to, to find yes, a job. very difficult. Therefore, the thing to do is to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Have a go at something. You know, you may only do it for six months or a year, but all of that can go on your resume. And these days, one of the things that many universities are looking for, even when they're taking people in, is not so much the grade point average, you know, that kind of thing. They're looking for the whole person. Right. You know, the whole person as to their personality, their drive, you know, their enthusiasm. Because yeah. these are the people that will make it in, in, uh, in a difficult world. Right. And it's certainly going to be difficult for a long time for a lot of folks, whether they're just coming out of college or whether they are, uh, you know, they've lost their jobs and going on to something going else. Going on to something else. And in the meantime, though, if they've lost their jobs and they can't find something in their own field, get some retraining. And in the meantime, go do any li little job that puts some food on the table or, and keeps, mm -hmm. the, keeps the light on. Well, and I like the idea. I mean, nothing, nothing is, it doesn't have to be forever. So when you're making a choice, you know, if you're doing something you love, maybe it will be forever. But maybe, maybe it's just for, you know, the next year. And, and if you decide you don't like it, then that's okay. The, I think the good thing about um, the way our sort of work culture society has evolved is you don't have to be... You know, start at IBM and end at IBM for 40 years mm -hmm. later. You mm -hmm. can, you can switch, and there's no stigma to that. I don't think. Um, no, there isn't yeah. any stigma to that. And there are, there are actually, there are a lot of articles in the West Hartford um, news these days about people who, either they chose to leave their jobs or had to leave their jobs and ended up. There's an article I just read about a woman who um, always baked and she always brought cookies into the people that she worked with, and then she ended up making a choice, I guess, to leave the business world. And she ended up creating a business out of these cookies mm -hmm. that she made. And mm -hmm. she's doing quite well. So, um, you know, like you said, follow your passion. Yes. And maybe doing that, you know, two years ago wasn't the right thing for her. But now, it N works. now her she kids can. are older. You know, yes. her kids, you know, her kids can let her do her baking in the morning or whatever. It Absolutely. Is, so. and, and not only that, these days, too, women... Um, there are not so many barriers to, to, to break. Yeah. You know, women have um, much more opportunity to, to, you know, to follow their dream. In fact, uh, a woman called Candace Carpenter wrote, wrote a book uh, a while back called Chapters. It used to be that, w you know, the women were at home and they were the homemakers and they were, they were in that, you know, environment. Right. And, um, and that was it. Yeah. But yeah. now you can follow, have different chapters in your life. Uh, you don't have to do um, 101 like I've done, <laughs> but... Um, but Little but, vignettes. <laughs> yeah, well, the point is, it, right. those things also moved me right. to where I am to now. To the of where you are. And, I, right. and as I say to people, too, um, the most fear, you know, when you're thinking about a, a, new, a new, new career, is until you step through that door, mm -hmm. or to, until you open the garden gate, I say to, to folks, too. Um, once you step through, a lot of that fear will disappear. A lot of change make, pr makes for anxiety. Mm -hmm. But um, but but soon as you step through, and the other thing to do is, um, uh, as well as stepping through, is um, reach out, ask. People love to give information. Mm -hmm. You know, they people want to feel needed. They love to feel helpful. Right. And particularly when we've got a tough economy like now, mm -hmm. people come together. 
you know, and, and want to help run another because there they think, but there but for the grace of God go I. Right. And, and so that, you've got that as part so of an environment. find a support network. Right. To, and I'm hoping that that will carry to on too. Right. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I belong to a, a very good group down on the shore. Uh, well, they're two good. One, I belong to Child and Family Organization, a wonderful group. But I also be belong to the Southeastern Connecticut Women's Network uh, group. And this is, um, you know, uh, we meet once a month. In fact, I did my Garden Earth lecture there this last week. And, um, you know, there's, there's a board as you go in. And if you're looking for a job, you can put the right, write what you're looking for. And there, will be, there are women in that group many times who say, oh, I've got something for you. Right. You know, just that kind of thing. But networking and, and connecting, you know, mm -hmm. passing information and say, ah, oh, I don't know about that, but... Um, I might know somebody who could help you soon. Right. You know, that, very important. Well, Women it are particularly feeling alone. I think too. It makes you feel because like we're not you're alone. Not, you're not alone. We're not right? alone. You're not alone. No, the thing is not to isolate. Yeah. And unfortunately, when you've got a, you know a difficult things going on in your life, whether it's uh, you know emotional, physical, mm -hmm. financial, women are apt, uh, particularly women, are apt to isolate, mm -hmm. um, and um, that's not good. Right. That's because depression can do. come in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, overeating, all of that kind of thing too. Right. And um, uh, yeah, and, and, and so the thing is, reach out and, um, and touch someone. Let them touch right. you. Let them touch you, yes, right. Yes, definitely. So have, an, have a good support network. Uh, don't let the fear keep you from walking through the garden gate or the door. Or don't buy into the fear. Yeah, don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. I mean, it. and the worst that can happen is someone can say no. Exactly. But the best that can happen is they won't say no. Yes. So you won't know unless you ask. And right? if they or say no, there's always somebody else. How many? Yes. Else, always right? somebody and else. Maybe you've learned from the experience, or they might say no for these reasons, mm -hmm. and then you're like, well, I can take care of these reasons yes. and then come back. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. So very briefly, before we run out of time, you um, you did come to the States, you worked in television for a while, and then Real, fast right. forward, you yes. started your business, The English Light. Right, right. I left New York, um, where I was working for Guiding Light, mm -hmm. came up to visit a friend of mine who was senior producer on Guiding Light, and started, um, wanted to go back. I knew it was my rhythm. Mm -hmm. I had been kind of out of rhythm a little bit, right. and wanted to go back to design my own uh, gardens again, and have my own team to, to install. Mm -hmm. And being able to do that, and my son Ian has followed me into the business, mm -hmm. and um, you know, at, at, as it, it's marvelous. I yeah. really, if I've got my hands in the soil, mm -hmm. and I can smell that manure, I really feel alive. You feel alive. It's, it, yeah. And the miracle of things that grow. Mm -hmm. You know, you get me talking about that. I mean, I just, yeah. it, it's that's what I really, really am. Found your passion. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is to, to, to get other things out of your system, too, right. you know, in life. And right. You don't, you don't have regrets that you didn't do no, something you thought no. you might want to do. Exactly. Which I think exactly. is great. Yes. Um, well, we are out of time. Oh. But I'm thrilled because Maureen is going to be back with me next month to talk about her gardening business and specifically how to or, uh, garden organically. So thank you so much for sharing your, um, your life and your experiences. And I wish we had had an hour and a half to talk about it all because I think there's a lot that we skipped through, but, um, but very great, great advice, great advice. You're very welcome, love, and I hope some, some folks were able to get um, some, some good information and some, some confidence, you know, yes. and to, to go forward in their life and do whatever, wherever their dreams will take them. Great, thank you. I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah, and don't forget to tune in next month. Maureen will be here with me again, and we'll be talking about organic gardening. Thanks, and good night.